In this movie, we're going to look at sessions in Ruby on Rails. Sessions are a way to store information to make our web application appear like it has state. And the way I'm talking about state here is we're saying that the web application actually maintains some information about what the user is doing as the user moves around the website. Now normally, web sites are, are stateless. In other words, they don't contain any state information as a user moves from place to place other than perhaps some logging information but that really isn't state information web application developers for a long time have been striving to maintain that state and you've probably used a stateful web application if you used anything like a shopping cart or, or those types of things and we're gonna look here at how rails does that state maintenance or maintaining I should say a session and they do it through the use of the sessions hash now the sessions hash is given to you automatically if we go in here and take a look at our cookies inside here for our local site you'll see let me get rid of these other cookies just so it isn't confusing you'll see that there's a cookie in here from this local site and right here we have a 32 digit random string I guess it would be because it has both alpha and numeric characters in here and this is essentially the session ID just as the cookie name implies here this is how rails keeps track of sessions is through this randomly generated session ID now you don't have to worry about that there was nothing that I had to do to set that up there's no code or anything else it's just automatically done for you now in order to make use of that all you have to do, the second line right here, shows us how we set a particular thing inside of our session. So we give it the name session, the hash name, session. Then we do the brackets. Then inside here we give it whatever our key is going to be called. In this case, last action. And then close the brackets, then an equal sign. And after that, whatever we want to store. This can be any type of Ruby object that we can serialize or in other words turn into a text representation or a hash representation of that particular object so if the object is dependent upon other things going on in your application it cannot be serialized in that manner you cannot store it in a session but something like text or what's really common a user ID stored in there normally that's what is done and I would caution you about storing a lot of information in there it can get a little bit slow depending on what you use to actually store your information all I've done here is a little demonstration thing and it's rather contrived where I have the method when the method is called inside of our controller it'll set the second thing here it sets the last action to itself so when this goes into the next page the page following whatever we call next the last action will be whatever that method was and we set that by doing a a instant variable that we set to session last action and this would have been set by the last method that called not this current one so we go ahead and get this information out first into this instant variable then we set it to whatever the current method is and then what we do is if we go into our layout let's go and grab this clipping what we do is go in here and we add a little bit of text print out here it says last action called was and then remember this is how you evaluate something inside there and as long as it's inside the double quotes the string this the hash mark and then the curly brackets and then whatever's inside here is going to get actually evaluated by Ruby in our case it's that instant variable last action so it's going to get whatever value that method set to and remember this gets set to the last method that was called so um, let me show you a little demonstration here go back out to our browser now right now you don't see anything I'm gonna click on show now it says the last action called was index sure enough if I do a back here oops, you'll see that there was nothing here but it was index that's the default so here the last this action is show so as soon as we called this the last action in our session was set to show and I can actually show you that because we can look and see where these are stored 
inside of our project. Here's our project folder. And inside of our project folder, you'll see down here a temp folder. And inside of there, we have a sessions folder. And then right now, you'll see two little files that are our session files. And there's two. One's a little bit older. I'll open this one. And what you'll see in here is a hash of whatever stuff we're storing. And in this case, last action is the value of that is show. So that's how that is stored. So if we go back to our, our web browser real quickly here, and I move on to, let's go to edit, you'll see that last action was show. Now this is a little bit of a contrived example. A much better application would be storing such as a user ID so you once someone is logged in, you always have access to that user ID or a shopping cart or some kind of persistent thing such as that. You should also keep in mind that the storing of the sessions in this temp folder and these files is just one way, and this is called a pstore, and that's the default way to store sessions. You can also store them inside of a database, such as a MySQL database. That's called the active record store, and you actually set that inside of your config folder you go into your environment RB and you'll see right down here in this line which is commented out at the moment a line that you can change and change this to whatever you want and the default to change it to is the active record store which is a database and then you just go in and create a database and it actually gives you the code here to go ahead and create that database to store your session information but there are trade-offs there's also remote protocol for storing session information on a DRB server which would be remote. You can also store it in memory using the memcache store which isn't really recommended and there's another one that's a little bit different called memory store it's slightly different and finally you can do a file store and store it somewhere else. So there's lots of options. I encourage you to go out on the web take a look at these different options in the API documentation.